All right, today I'm here with another video doing my uh, 99XJ. I've got a check engine light that came on. Turns out it's the oxygen sensor, the downstream O2 sensor. Um, I'm not gonna go into details of how it went on and what went on and what I think or why I think that's the problem. I'll discuss that later in the video. Right? We'll just get right into the install of the video. But one of the things that I got, besides the new O2 sensor, I thought this little tool, which this is just the, the socket, so you can get the O2 sensor out. See, it's got a slit in it, so you can basically do this to get the old one out. Instead of using, you could use an adjustable wrench or an open end wrench, but these are grilled on there. Uh, after all those years, you know, mine's been on there 20 years, you know, 20 years of rust and heat from the exhaust, so it's going to be on there good. So I, I did PB Blaster over the last couple days, but I also wanted to buy this tool. Um, this one was like 10 bucks. I saw ones on Amazon for like 6 $7, but they weren't as thick as this one. This one seems a little bit beefier. And one of the problems that people say with these tools, at least with the cheaper ones, is, you know, when you're applying a lot of torque on them, this actually gap opens up because of the, the stress and then it just slips. So I paid a little bit more and got this one. Hopefully this will work. Uh, other things you could do, people also get a socket, a uh, regular one, and they'll just cut the wires and then put a socket right over. Um, if I didn't want to cut the wires just because, just in case it's not the O2 sensor, I'll still have the old one. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it is because going to the codes that came up on a scanned it came up as the downstream O2 sensor. All right, so let's uh, go into the install and, and check out. Hopefully this will uh, hopefully it'll remove easier than, than I think it will. All right, so there's the O2 sensor on my Cherokee. It's wet because I just sprayed it with a uh, PB blaster again. Like I said, I've been doing it the last couple days. And the cable comes right up. It connects right up there. So a lot of times that fastener breaks loose and the wire dangles and either gets caught around the drive shaft, the drive shaft chews it up or lays on the exhaust and the exhaust burns it up. So just check your wiring first <clears throat> if you do get the error because it might not be the O2 sensor, it may be the wiring, but my wiring looks intact. So I'm gonna try and bust that out of here. And like I said, this is the downstream O2. It's between the cat and the muffler. And then you've got another one. Oh, I can't see it from up here. But that's the upstream one up that way. All right, so first, let's disconnect this guy. Maybe it helps. Open a little clip there. <laughs> Do that. There we go. And pull. All right. So that's out. All right. I was trying with this ratchet, but that's a little too. That's a half inch, and they needed the adapter. Which made it too long, so there we go. Ugh. And just like I thought, she doesn't want to budge. some heat. Mm. Let's go with the heat. Oh, 
make up our work. If you could see, that did start to spread. And it, it was almost about to give way. But luckily it came out. But now it's stuck in there, so I gotta probably put it in the vise and pull it out. <sighs> Alright, so I got the new one. I just started in there. Sorry to have the camera rolling, but really don't need any explanation of that. Alright. It went in pretty good. One of the hardest things was getting the old oxygen center sensor out of this socket. Pretty good. Alright, now I just have to make the connection. Just that way. So it's clipped in. And then you get your little tab that goes. Make sure your wiring is clear. There you go. Push that in there. And then I just want to clip this back in there. All right, so the O2 sensor is in, and got it up here. You want to make sure you keep these lines clear from your drive shafts, because you don't want your drive shaft spinning and catching this wire. So I've got that. I'm probably gonna tuck it up more. Well, we'll see. It's tucked up pretty good. Uh, they've got a little zip tie thing here. It's like a adjustable little wire holder and then it snaps in and then you get the little push pin there so all right let's, let's see if that resolved the issue check engine light is gone but I did disconnect the battery and then reconnect it but I'm also going to check got my code reader plugged in there so I'm going to bring up the codes and see uh see what comes up but uh yeah, so far so good. I, I did check just before I started it. I looked in the uh, in the Torque app with it connected, and there were no codes. It said no codes uh, as far as engine engine error codes. So that may be a good sign. But I also have to drive it around a while and see what happens. See if the light comes back on. See if the O2 sensor is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But uh, the actual engine sounds it actually sounds a little bit better. I don't know if it's kind of placebo effect. But it does sound like it's running a little bit smoother. But all right, let's check the codes. All right, so that's it. That's how to change the O2 sensor in a 99 Cherokee in an XJ. I highly recommend buying this tool and buy the heavy duty one because, as you can see, uh, when I was taking it out, that was starting to spread a little bit. Um, luckily, it just happened to break free just as that was probably that spread was going to be too much and it was going to slip. So I got lucky and it did break free just before that. Um, I don't think the thinner ones, the cheaper ones that I found on Amazon, uh, I think it would have slipped completely and it would have spread even more. And according to the reviews of the cheaper ones, that's what everyone's complaints are about it. So this was like nine bucks, 10 bucks. Definitely recommend getting it instead of trying to use an open end wrench. Um, the other thing is people sometimes just get a regular 22 millimeter socket and they cut the wires. If they know the O2 sensor is bad for sure, they just cut it since it's gonna be replaced anyway, and then you could just slip a, a regular 22 millimeter right over it. But I just wasn't sure if it, if it was the O2 sensor, so I didn't want to clip the wires. That's why I just spent the 10 bucks and got this. Um, so now to recap why I did the O2 sensor and why I believed it was bad. I got gas earlier Saturday morning, and then I was driving around, and like five miles later, the light came on check engine light. I thought maybe it was the gas cap. I didn't put it on tight enough, but I checked that it was tight. That wasn't the problem. Uh, by the time I drove home, light was still on. I threw the, sense, the code reader on and it showed me it was a downstream O2 sensor. So I bought the O2 sensor on Amazon. I'll put the link in that as, as well down below. And I think I might as well change it because they range anywhere from like 100 to 150,000 miles they say before they go bad. I've got 139,000 miles. The Jeep's 20 years old. This is the original O2 sensor. So it it's uh, it did its job and it was time to get, get changed. Uh, the other thing that tipped me off is when I did get gas that day, 
I always write down my miles and you know the, the, how many gallons my, my Jeep took from empty to full and the miles in between and I was averaging 11.8 miles per gallon which was worst I've ever gotten in that Jeep before. I'm usually anywhere between 14 to 16, anywhere in between there, it's usually normal. I've never seen it go down to 11.8 which is also an indicator that you may have a bad O2 sensor because it's not adjusting the, uh, the fuel mixture uh, correctly because the you know, it doesn't know how to read it correctly with a bad sensor. So, uh, that led me to believe it was the O2 sensor, which in this case it was, as you saw once we put it in, and I cleared the codes and started up, I didn't get the check engine light, but who's not to say it's not gonna come back again. I'll, uh, you know, keep driving and, and keep seeing, but when I did check the uh, the readings again, they were showing no uh, no engine faults on the, uh, in the torque program. So, uh, Next up, I'll probably do the front sensor, the upstream sensor, just because I might as well do it before it fails. And as you see, it's really not a hard job to do. And now that I especially have this tool, a little more confident in getting it done. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.